Okay, right, so welcome to the show. We're gonna be do, doing some electronics kits here. I've got some, I've got a couple of three kits here that I wanna build. Don't know if we're gonna be doing all of them tonight. I'm just gonna start on one and just see how far we get basically. Um, so the first one I'm gonna start on is one that I've been wanting to build for a while. I've been sitting on this one for ages. This is a component tester kit. So um, uh, basically once this is done, um, it will, it, it, yeah. Small, small gadget about that big with a screen on it. And basically you plug various electronics components into it and it will tell you what you've got. So, um, I mean, a multimeter does the same thing, but this makes it really quick and easy to test stuff on mass, which could be really helpful when building these kits. Because for anyone who, um, um, nah, hello George. No, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to laugh at me failing to build kits. I should be better this time. Although that much being said, I do need to get coffee. Uh, but where was I? So yeah, uh, the last kit that I was building, which granted was quite a complicated one, um, was uh, this um, uh, uh, this small pocket oscilloscope. And this involved a lot of component testing. So um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a component tester. So next time I have to go through that, I'll have something that will make it really fast and easy to do. So we're going to start with this one. And if we if things are going well and we've got more time, then we'll do some of the other kits as well. Uh, right, let's open this thing up and just see what we've got. And then I need to quickly stick some coffee on the go and we'll get started. Um, uh, oh. eh, 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 eh. All right. Here's our main board. We've got a couple of bits already on this. A few surface mount stuff there. We've got a SOT20 um, and a couple of passives. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like we've got to do most of the work on this. Is there any other surface mount stuff to go on here? No, yeah. So it's just it's just those two of the surface mount stuff. Everything else is all through hole um, stuff. So this will be really this one will be really easy to make. So um, it looks like we've got uh, a single uh, single IC here that does all the magic. Um, so this is this will be an ASIC chip. Um, so uh, it basically, it's a programmable chip that does all of the work. So that's going to go dead center. Um, then we've got some jumpers here. Uh, we've got this dude, which is what we plug in our stuff to test with. So this is a, a lockable hole thing. So let's say I want to test this capacitor. Um, this is going to sit on the board. Looks like it's going to go there-ish. And what's going to happen is I'll have a screen on here and I will go put that in there and there and then lock it in place and it will go beep and tell me what it is basically that's the plan hey recorded dragoon how's it going thanks for dropping in man and thanks for the host as well um do apologize if i'm slow to respond or uh, or notification stuff i don't have any of my notification stuff running on this computer because this is my youtube recording rig at work so uh right okay so uh oh we've got a rotary encoder on this thing as well i wonder what that's for See, part of me, there's no instructions with this at all, actually. <laughs> and actually, yeah. No, we are completely, yeah. Uh, for a minute, I was like, oh, are these things all the same? But no, we've got a lot of different resistors here. We are going to need to find instructions. George! George, find me instructions while I go and get coffee. That is your job now. Here's, uh, here's the packet. See if you can figure out what it is I've got from that. Uh, if you haven't found it by the time I've got coffee, we're going to have to look up what I actually ordered and find some instructions for this thing. Uh, is there anything on the board as well, actually? Um, called a transistor tester, maybe? That's all I know. I'll be right back. <laughs> you found it yet, George? <laughs> yeah, Amazon's where I bought this one from. This one's an Amazon kit. I mean, this thing is, these things are limited, but I, I watched a video about one of these on EEV blog um, a while back, which is what inspired me to buy one. Um, and, uh, um, you know, they cost like five or seven quid or so. I think this one was a tenner or something. Um, but yeah, it was a case of I wanted it just because it was cool, basically. Um, and yeah, I mean, although it won't pick up complex stuff, it will be a really good resistor tester and that kind of thing. Let me give you a, uh, what do you need to know, George? Because we, I mean, uh, my plan, if any of this wasn't working, is we could probably reverse engineer a lot of this fairly easily. Oh, hold on a sec. I'm just, oh, I'm a fucking idiot again. <laughs> Excuse my language, we're on team stream. 
Um, it's all it's on the goddamn board. <laughs> it's all written there. It's 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 all there. GG Nori. <laughs> Hello, the great one. How's it going? Thanks for your efforts, George. I love you, really. <laughs> this is the second time in a row I've done one of these let's build stuff things and just not read what's right in front of me. I am good. This is why I wanted to build these. I think this is fun. I think this is funny as hell. George doesn't because I've just made him look up all the instructions for what I'm about to build and then said, oh, it's actually on the board in front of me, but you know, whatever. Okay, let's get going. Um, we're going to start out by sticking all the chip sockets on the board. I'm going to start with the big stuff and then we'll move down to the smaller stuff. So I've got to straighten out the pins on this dude. Uh, where's a prime tool? There's one. Ugh. Instructions are all in foreign. Oh, that's that's my that's the that's the worst kind of language for them to be in. Right, I'm just using my prime tool just to straighten all the legs on this chip socket because it all got bashed about in the post. Thanks, George. We'll come to that as soon as I require it. Okay, so let's get the let's start putting the easy stuff on chip sockets. So this big dude that's going to hold our ASIC, um, let's stick that on the board. So line that up carefully. Just see if those pins are straight yet. Not yet. I'm just going to use my tweezers to get those dudes in. Whoops. Overshot on the end. There we go. Okay. Let's start soldering. So I'm going to get the two opposite corners first. I really like just building kits like this. This is the bit that I enjoy. It's kind of repetitive when you're doing chip sockets like this, but it's just an easy excuse to solder stuff together. And like, I'm barely going to use any of these kits. Some of them I bought, I was just like, this looks really crap and I'm not going to use it. But it looks like it, I, I, bought, I, yeah, I bought the kits based on whether I thought they would be fun to build, not whether I thought the product was useful. So I looked for any kits that were that had a lot of complexity in them or a big range of different components. I mean, this this one is almost certainly is primarily based on the chip that's powering it. But some of these kits, I'm kind of hoping that we can go through the circuit design and see if we can figure out how it works. That would be fun. Do a bit of learning. Look at all my glorious leaded solder smoking away. Okay, that's our chip socket on. I'm just going to reflow those joints. So I'm just going to go over all the solder joints again. And just melt them all, just so they settle into nice, neat little blobs. Damn. All right, one chip socket. And that is... Nice and flat on the board. That's what we like to see. There we go. Okay, right. So, what's next? Um, I suppose, well, how much am I going to get punished for putting the... Um, where is that? There's the component socket. That dude's going to go on there. I don't think we're going to put... I think we're going to put this on later on, though, because this thing is enormous and it's just going to get in the way of everything. So, um, I think I'm going to start putting on all the passives. Uh, passives, actually. We'll start putting on all of the resistors and stuff like that. Um, yeah, let's do that. So let's start doing this bank of resistors. Um, all right, so uh, you, what are you? That's a 10K. All right, so these are 10K resistors. Have I got a pen handy? I bet I don't. There should be one around here, but I can never find it when I want it. Nope, okay. Uh, so these are 10k resistors. Let's stick those to actually, you know what? Let's just put in all the 10k resistors. That's a no-brainer because we've just found six resistors that I can now place. So let's pick and place these 10k's and put them out on the board. Uh, let's get my just get my full screen preview on front of me again, just so I can see what you guys are seeing. There we go. Okay, right. So uh, where are we putting our 10k? So we've got 
Um, so we've got six of them available to us. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Dunzo. All right, let's play some resistors. Okay, let's go in with the iron. I think I've got my iron at just the right temperature for this. You want to keep your iron, you don't want to have your iron too hot because then you just risk burning everything up. However, if you have it too cold, everything fights you. You know, as soon as you touch it against something, it just takes the it just takes the heat out of your iron, and the solder won't melt anymore. <coughs> no, I didn't buy some helping hands. Neater than the oscilloscope. Uh, no, I haven't, George. Again, I was way too tired to build that oscilloscope. I was um, uh, when I I saw it, it was horrifying editing the video for the oscilloscope build on YouTube because I was just watching myself make such a hash of that. I mean, it worked. You know, we were, we were lucky that thing worked first time, but you know, such is. But yeah, this time I'm, um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling a bit more in the mood for this. Um, right, I was a bit too bold with the oscilloscope. I've been sitting on this kit for a couple of weeks waiting for a good time. There we go, some nice neat soldering there. And where's my focus? Show you guys. So there are uh, nice 10k resistors. Right, so what's next? So we've got more banks of resistors. I think what we'll do is we'll just um, pick out the other resistors from the pack and uh, start putting those on the board. We'll start with the easy stuff. I've got another bank, another set of three here Arr, that are all tangled up. So we've got these guys. Let's find out what these guys are. And uh, no, George, if I ha didn't answer that question, I haven't bought the helping hands yet because I'm a baddie. Um, however, I will, I will buy some, possibly after this stream um, or possibly tomorrow, whenever I get round to it. There we go. You guys can see what's on the multimeter screen there. Right. What are these? Six, eight, two K point six, eight, two K. Okay, 0.7k, 680, 680, that's going to be it. And we got three of them there. We got any other 680s? Nope. All right, that's 680 then. All right, those are our 680 ohm uh, resistors placed. So uh, let's stick some solder on those. We need to have a look at this thing and figure out exactly how it works if we can. That would be kind of fun. Um, right, okay, so let's keep going with the resistors. Let's get these out of the way. The resistors are the most boring part of this build, so we just get them done. Okay, right, multimeter, go. Big screen. Multimeter, what is this? I have to find out what components I have in order to build my com my device for finding out what components I have. Okay, that looks like a pretty confident 470. So have we got anything on the board that looks like 470? Oh yeah, right down dead center. Let me turn that around. 470K. Um, in the middle. That's what we want. So we're going to finish that middle bank of resistors. Okay. I kind of feel like we want some background music as well. I'm feeling, I'm feeling lonely in here. I'm just going to bring up... Uh, 
I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to bring up the YouTubes and stick on a bit of uh, uh, a bit of background stuff because that's the kind of person I am. All right, nice and neat. Oh, that guy's standing up a bit. Let's um, yeah. Those guys are not particularly flat. I'm just gonna straighten those guys out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my finger across that bank of resistors and press them into the board while I reflow. Those are much nicer now. Of course, it doesn't matter if they stick up, it's just tidiness. Ugh, I'm getting bored of these resistors. I think we might do something else for a bit and come back to the resistors. Hmm. Yeah, we got. Let's do that bank of capacitors up there. In fact, what capacitors have we got? Let's have a quick mooch through the parts bin. <laughs> uh, okay, we got an electrolytic, two electrolytics. And the rest of them are all ceramic boys. 104, 103, 104, 104, 22. Where's that 103 boy? Let's separate him out. 104, eh. 102. Oh man. 102, uh, 22, and 104. All right, and um, what are these cans? These are 10, 10 microfarads. Okay. Okay, right. Let's stick on some of these uh, capacitors. So let's come back over to the board. Right, so. Um, were both the electrolytics identical? 10 microfarads, 10 microfarads. Yeah, the, the electrolytics are identical, so we can just stick these on the board straight away. We've got these marked out here, and uh, the electrolytics are polarized, so we've got a negative pin there, and that's marked with a positive pin there. So that dude's gonna go in there, stick him on the board. So yeah, we'll do that. Where's my other electrolytic go, guys? There we go, there it is, I've spotted him. He goes there. Right, so my negative pin is down. I need to turn that around, there we go. So positive is the long leg. There we go. In. Let's get those dudes soldered in. There we go. That's the electrolytics done. Whoops. <laughs> Metal shards coming at the camera at the moment. This stream is now in 3D. <laughs> oh, hard drive failure. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm straight up. Anyone in this stream, if you don't back up your computer, back it up. You will lose your data. I do this for a living. I fix computers for a living. You are going to lose your data if you don't back it up. So for realsies, get that done, guys. Oh, you know what? We got our little power LED here, power LED. That's going to be that guy up there. Let's put him in place. So LEDs are also polarized. You can uh, you can spot them. Their uh, their negative leg, the uh, cathode, um, is shorter. So we've got a shorter leg there. And in addition to that, the cathode side has a flat on it, which corresponds to the flat there. So he's going to go in there. Stick him in. Done. The soldering is going really neatly. I'm digging it. All right. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. So we've got some electrolytic caps on there and an LED now. Okay, let's find some more stuff to go on here. So 
As you can see, what's going on here is um, we've got sets of pins that are going through the resistors and then there is, what will happen is that the, um, the chipset is going to mux the uh, components. So the chipset will pulse the pins and see what kind of responses it gets and it will redirect the signals through various other areas of the board to test whatever it finds. So if it finds a, um, for example, if it finds a transistor, it will redirect through the switch, through a set of diodes and switches to see which way around it is and so on and so forth. So that's basically what this thing is doing. It's a very simple device really, it's quite clever. Of course, uh, the, the simple stuff is the best. So we could, I'm gonna do some more resistors. We're gonna, we're gonna slowly plow on through these one by one because they've gotta get done. The resistors are the crappiest parts because I've got to test the damn things before putting any of them in. Okay, let's move you out of the way a sec. In comes the multimeter again. Right, what are these? This is literally why I want the component tester. Okay, 1K. That's a very clean one killer ohm. Ah, there they go, 1Ks. That's where they go. Of course, some of this circuitry is for the display controller as well, which is going to be mostly a mixture of built into the display and the ASIC chip, which controls the whole show. Here's our tiny little LCD that we'll be putting on. So that's got a controller on the back of it there. It's got a voltage regulator to power it and uh, just a tiny little LCD controller there that then goes back to this. This is probably a serial port and it's probably talking to the ASIC via a serial bus. Easy way of having a rudimentary LCD. LCDs are surprisingly easy to implement, even these color things. That's the thing, component, just electronics these days, it's so cheap and there's so many off-the-shelf uh, solutions that very, seemingly very clever little circuits like this are just so cheap to make. Right, those guys flat. Not quite, I'm just gonna touch those up slightly. There we go. That's more like it. Nice and flat. 27K. There's some 27Ks there. No, there's, is there 27? Yes, 27K. Were there any 22s that I saw there just in case I get caught out? No, I saw a 20K down there, that was it. Okay. I was really chuffed uh, the other day. Um, so the uh, the oscilloscope that I built on the last one of these streams that I did, um, the video ended up being really much longer than I hoped it would be. Um, and I wasn't hugely chuffed with it. But despite that, I did have a comment from someone who said uh, they used to build big RF transmitters for a living. And he said he watched the video and was inspired to build one of the oscilloscopes himself. And that just made my day. Because it's one of, it's like, that's kind of the goal here, is just to make people look at it and go, that's really cool, I want to try that. Because like, I've got some fancy equipment in this shop. Um, but the all you really need to be doing what I'm doing now is just a soldering iron, some, a, a soldering iron, some solder, and a multimeter. That's the only um, that's the only basic equipment I'm using. And sure, my soldering iron is slightly more fancy because it's temperature adjustable and stuff like that. But you don't need that. A basic soldering iron will be quite happy with just simple double-sided boards like this. Like when I'm working on laptops and stuff, you need something a bit heavier duty, a bit more advanced. But for just these are just double-sided circuit boards. You know, you don't need a lot of heat to work on them. It's so easy to do. And I could be using flux if I wanted to, but I don't need flux for this. Just good solder is all you want. So it's so cheap to have some fun and just build a circuit, even if it just makes some lights flash, you know, just so you can go, yeah, I, I built that. It's just really good fun to do, I love it. What do we got here? Uh, whoops, 3.3 was that? 3.3 kilo ohms. Three 
3.3 kilo ohms. Where do you live? 3.3. So it's probably going to be 3k3. There's a 3k3. There's a 33k. There it is, 3k3. So there and there. This isn't quite as bad as the uh, the analog board for the oscilloscope. Has so many resistors on that. And I had to look up the locations, at least with this one, I've just got to stare at the board. Alright, these things aren't going to be flat, but I'm just going to get some solder on them, and then I'll straighten them up. Mmm, 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 leaded solder. This stuff would be highly illegal in uh, any civilized country these days. My so <laughs> what's, oh boy, what's going on with you? <laughs> that's a, that's from the Radiohead song "Stand Up, Sit Down." That one is right. Let's let's sort that out. We've got to step this one in. Mm. All right, let's get these five out of the way, and then we're done. 220, that's a very obvious 220. 220, top right. That's 100K. See, George is being pro and looking up color codes. Meanwhile, I'm just like, lol, use a multimeter. What did I just say for that, 100K? I'm pretty certain that was 100K. Yeah, 100K. Thirty-two K. I saw that. Thirty-two K. Thirty-two K. Where do you go? Where do you live? Oh, there's thirty-three K. That's bloody close enough. Allowing for the fact that this is a twenty-pound multimeter, that's probably a thirty-three K. <laughs> And our survey says 2.2. .2. That's going to be 2K2 on the board. That should be fairly distinctive. 2K2. There he is. 2K2. And our 20K is there. I'm seeing empty slots. We're missing a 180K there. Let me just center that a bit better. This guy's missing. Our 20K goes there. Are we missing any other resistors? He's 180k. Beautiful. Right, okay, we've got... This guy th reckons he's going to be slick and try and get away. Right, let's get some solder on these guys and then we'll straighten them all up as usual. Just in the land of having a perpetual solder blob on the end of my iron at the moment. Okay, did I miss anyone? I don't think so. Let's clean the iron and straighten those guys. Ah! We've got another guy who reckons he's going to get away here. All right, there we go. All them resistors. All right, we've done all these. We've done all of these sodding um, resistors. Let's start putting some capacitors on this board. We've done our two electrolytics. Um, we've got a pair of twenty twos there, and very conveniently, we've got some. Uh, all of these ceramics look identical, but it's actually got twenty two written on it. Let me do a super close in for you. There he is. There's our twenty two. So that's how I'm tracking down. That's how I'm tracking down these um, uh, these capacitors. So we got him on there. Boop. And whoops, knocking the camera. Him on there. 
Am I going to fall out? No, he's going to be a goodie. Nice. You're the yellow boys, yeah. It's all that you need though. I'll have a look and see what these caps are all up to in a sec. Capacitors are usually there for decoupling and filtering. Although we might have a couple here that... So, uh, those, are, those are the 22s. Right, we've got some 104s there. 104 there, 104 there. Uh, we've got loads of 104s. Let's come back to those. Where am I? I've got a 103 and I've got another 102. So there's our 103. Uh, where's our 102? 102 goes there. Uh, okay, let's put on all these 104s. We've got a lot of them. Uh, one up there. Two up there. Get in there. Whoop. 104. Do, 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 do. 104. I've got another two of these to go and I'm running out of places. There's one, 104. E. And we need one more. Cool, alright, let's get those guys soldered in then. Uh, some of these things could do with reflowing. We'll get that once we've done everything else. We'll just give the board a quick visual inspection and just make sure that we've um, reflowed all those joins. Been a little bit blobby in some areas. Not the end of the world, that's just tidiness though. And are those guys all sitting flat? They look pretty good to me. Nice. All right, cool, I think we've done. We've done all the passives. So now we've got some transistors to go on the board. Got some trannies. Uh, so let's get them fitted. Uh, we've also got our crystal. Got a little uh, eight megahertz crystal here. Let's stick him on now. So this thing wants a clock generator because it's uh, it's run. It's essentially. This is probably got essentially running at an eight megahertz clock frequency, and uh, this crystal here is just going to be serving that up for us. Hey, there we go. Uh, we got too much solder on that. A loop. So that clock is being decoupled by those two caps going to what is probably a ground lane going all across the top here. Yeah, it is because the... Oh yeah, no, that's part of the... Again, that's part of the square wave output. Interesting. Oh well. Right. What do we got in the transistor department? Oh, hang on a sec. Let me trim them legs because it's not sitting down. There we go. Oh, these guys are, these guys have got very small writing on them. No, stop rolling over. Stand up. I want to show you to the world. Okay, have we got any similar ones here? What were you? I've seen one pair. Okay, SO9, right, okay, so we've got SO914, sorry, S9014, S9012, 75550, SO914, that one's the same as this guy. 
And that one is different. Okay, so these two are the same, the others are all different. Right, 9014, 9014. That's a match. Then we've got another 9014 there. I see a 9012 further down the board. So. So these guys are transistors. Not sure what type, I don't know enough about them to do uh, site identification. Right, the 9012 goes in there. And I'm not gonna push these right down flat on the board, I'm gonna give them a little bit of clearance. What part of the land are you in, Drinky? Cheshire. I can't remember where Cheshire is. I've heard Okay, we're all done with our uh, components. We just gotta put on the big stuff now. So um, uh, let's get our, let's put on our wire points and our DC jack. Uh, so DC jack clearly goes in there. Bam. This guy's gonna soak up a crap ton of solder, I bet. jack nice and flat on the board now we've got some power for it okay right which way around do these guys go so these guys are going to all face off of the board there uh, I'm gonna put these on one by one because they're all gonna to want to fall out Cool. There's our uh, pinouts. Okay. All right. So we got some headers, and then also we got these standoffs. These are basically stands for the board. Uh, I think I'm going to put on the I'm going to put on the, the socket. Let's get this guy on the board. So uh, that's going to go bang in the middle. That's going to go there. So are these pins straight? Yes, they are. Now are you just going to sit down? Yes, you are. Easy peasy. And on it goes. Dan. And is that dude flat? I want this guy dead flat. Yeah, that looks good. This guy is looking pretty complete. So let's get the rotary encoder on. So this is a twisty boy and a pushy boy. Mm -mm -mm. Like that. This guy is just bent all over the show. I'm going to straighten him out. Hmm. This this rotary encoder has really awful top pins, and it's just sitting wonky. It's going to be at an, ergon, ergodyna, an ergonomic angle. 
an ergodynamic angle. <laughs> Alright, it's going on like that. It's so it's been decreed. Mmm. Nice. Yeah, on the pins as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I If I had some bigger side cutters, I could have sorted out those pins, but nah, that's fine. That's all right. All right. I'm happy with all of that. That's all right. Give a job its value. Okay. Uh, right. Let's put on some feet, I think. And then we've got to start putting the screen on. No, no. I would not I would not complain about the quality of any of this. Ah, there we go. There we go. It got legs now. So Now we should have what? What? What is this? Should be one of them. I'm missing a screw. It makes me sad. Okay, we've got to put these guys in the other side. These are going to be the standoffs that the uh, screen sits on. I would complain at the memeing, but I, I like boy memes. I def I especially like the uh, the who would win memes. All the tea in China. Okay. So let's put that there, and then I think we'll put the legs on. Whoops. And then we'll put the legs on the screen. I think. So then those two meet up. All right, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of flux to glue this guy in place because he's not gonna wanna sit there. Don't forget the IC, yep, yep. It's on my mind, George. I'm gonna put that on next, I think. Otherwise, yeah, he's gonna get forgotten. And there's no reason to leave it off the board at this point now. All right, are you straight? This guy needs to be straight. He's good enough. All right, I see. So this guy is uh, an Atmel chip. At Mega328P, 1731. Okay, so he's gonna go around that way. So we've gotta bend the legs on this dude. So I'm just gonna give him a bit of uh, gentle persuasion on the counter. I see inserted. I see what you did there. Ha! Huh. Okay, screen boy. Now we've got to be a little bit careful with soldering iron here because we're very close to that LCD. I'm just putting a blob on the end of the iron and just letting that fall across the pen. Just laying little solder blobs. Whoop, there we go. Sweet.
I hope this guy doesn't need power to there. Can't see how it would. Oops. There we go, there's no need to tighten that screw up. So we're missing one of these screws to go there. We are down a screw, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's not gonna fall off. All right, I've run out of components. It's ready to go. Let's put some power on this thing. Let's see if it works. Now comes the bit where we either go, yay, it works, or we all do the sad trombone and you guys rip the piss out of me. DC power supply uh, is on at nine volts. Here goes. Oh. Shit. It doesn't fit, you guys. Okay, we've got to hotwire this. <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah, the center pin is too big. It's, um, the, the male connector is too large. That's fine. We can work with this. I just need some jumper wires. All right, drum roll, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Get ready for the smoke. And bam. All right. Uh, huh. Oh, there we go. I pushed the encoder and it's doing things. Battery 9.1 volt, okay. All right. No unknown or damaged part. That's what we expected. So I was prepared for this situation. Here is an LED. LED. So let's test an LED. Let's put in our diode, or our LED. It's not gonna power this LED, I don't think. Nope, oh, there we go. Haha! -ha. There we go, so it's a diode. So pin one to pin two is a diode. Um, it read at uh, 2.75 volts, and it has a capacitance of 22 picofarads. There we go. That's it, that's what it does. Oh, there we go. Well, I found the menu. So switch off, transistor, frequency, generator, 10-bit PWM, all of that stuff. Wow, look at this stuff. So I'd have to actually read the manual to see what all of this stuff is. Infrared encoder and decoder, that's pretty baller. Self-test. Is there a calibration that it wanted? Voltage, front color, back color. Ooh, that looks fun, let's change colors. Oh, no way. Ooh. Uh. This, um. Screen does not, oh, there we go, there's white. Cool. I can cut, yeah, I know. RGB, boys. <laughs> you wait, you'll be able to buy this from, uh, you'll be able to buy this from Corsair soon. How, how do I go back? Hold it down, there we go, back color. Cool, I think I'm just gonna leave it on white, to be honest. Show data. Switch off. Okay, that's the bottom. What's show data? Version 1.12K. Nice. All right. How much power are we drawing at the moment? So we're drawing, uh, we're currently drawing uh, two milliamps. So it's using no power at all. Very low power, this thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hook this thing up to a nine volt battery so I can run it at the same time as my um, oscilloscope and we're gonna try its frequency generator out. Okay, battery. So we should have power from the battery now. 
Nice. Battery at 8.6 volts. <laughs> oh boy, these batteries are really bad. Let me just quickly check if the other one is any better. That battery is, oh. How about that one? Is it gonna be any better? 8.9 volts, okay, that's fractionally better. Okay, let's see if this thing can generate a square wave. So, time to do some duo-ing. So what we're gonna do, this guy's got some function generators, which are gonna create some uh, waveforms that the oscilloscope can look at. Uh, right, are these grounded? No, the legs are not grounded. I need to find a ground point for this. We're probably going to need to stick a jumper wire on it. So let's screw this guy in. Ground for the oscilloscope. And let's power the scope up. And scope. Okay. Let's see what this thing can do. So firstly, let's check our test signal. So, right, so there is a square wave. So this is the test signal from the oscilloscope. So um, uh, this is the oscilloscope also has a test signal output. So we're looking for a square wave like this coming out from this device, which shows us that it can generate our own outputs. Um, so, 10-bit PWM outputs on TP2 and so one two that's what the PDF says okay I'm gonna go into here 10-bit PWM okay right I'm gonna set let's probe around and see what we can find so right now we've got a 10-bit PWM at a 50% duty cycle according to the stream a screen so let's see if we can find anything There we go, there's one. Let's quickly go into trigger mode for that. All right, so there is a 7.8 kilohertz frequency at a 50% duty cycle. Can we change our duty cycle to identify? Yeah, we can. Yeah, so we are changing it. So look, if I drop the duty cycle down to 25%, as you can see, we're modifying the waveform that it's out, uh, outputting. So there we go. So there's our function generator. We're creating a, um, a pulse width signal. And so as we change the duty cycle, it changes how long we are in a high mode for. So if we bring that up to 75%, you can now see that 75% of the time the signal is on and 25% of the time the signal is off. And um, it's a bit of a ropey signal. You can see the edges on that are really rounded, but you know, it works. That's pretty baller. Let's put that back down to 50%. Okay, so it works. That's pretty funky. So what else can we do in this thing? Uh, hold down for two seconds. Uh, so what's F generator? Function, oh, okay, so this is going to generate frequencies. So let's start at a thousand, let's start at a thousand kilohertz. Uh, that seems a bit high. I don't know how high this, um, uh, this oscillos the oscilloscope can do. Let's start at a hundred kilohertz. Right, anyone at home there? Whoa, there we go. Anyone at home on any other ones? No. No idea what these other ones are. No idea who's supposed to be there, but we're getting output from the from the PWM signal. Right, so this is now at 100 kilohertz, which I think, can you guys see? Yeah, let me bring you guys a bit in a bit closer. All right, so we're generating a 100 kilohertz from our component tester that we've built, and we're reading 100 kilohertz on the scope. And if I slow that down, so we're now down to 
10 microseconds for each square on the screen. So as you can see, there is our, um, there is our uh, 100, 100 hertz frequency. Let's just drop out of uh, trigger mode, just see how stable that is. It's a bit crazy on the scope, but if we go into trigger, it stabilizes a little bit more. Can we single shot that? There we go, there's the single shot. Um, not bad. Okay, let's go back into auto and unhold. So let's bring up the, let's see how long we can track this for with the oscilloscope. So let's start stepping this up and see how long this thing can track it for. So there's 150. Am I at my fastest speed here? Yeah, my, this is as quick as the oscilloscope can go. So let's see how long the oscilloscope can keep up with this. Oh, it doesn't like it. Yeah, it looks like this thing tops out. Let's take it out of, let's take it out of uh, trigger mode. So yeah, as you can see, we're getting a lot of, yeah, no, the oscilloscope is just about getting a read on the frequency, but it can't track it on the waveform. 500. No, the oscilloscope's gone now. This oscilloscope cannot keep up with that kind of frequency. But we know it's working, because if we drop down to 100 again, we've got a fairly stable 100 there. Let's go back into trigger. And 50. 25. 10. And now we can start speeding up the time signature again. So we're up to 0.1 milliseconds and 5,000 hertz. Yep, so five kilohertz. 2.5 and then how, how low down does this thing actually go, I wonder? We're getting down to fairly random numbers here. I'm not quite sure why. Oop, there it is. One milliseconds. Not sure why we have these particular divisions here. 50 hertz, 10 hertz. We're getting really slow now. 10 hertz is as slow as it goes. So let's go on to... Whoop! And there we go. Now we're getting the scroll. Can the camera track that? Just about. So this is almost quick enough to count. Let's come out trigger again. Yeah, I think that's about as stable as we can get it, but that's kind of cool because we can, we can see that now. See, at this point we're getting into the realms of real-time counting. So yeah, that's kind of fun. And then it goes silent again. Woo! Woo! Nice. All right. So let's see if we can find any other functions in this thing. What's the timer at? Yeah, we're about done now here. Let's just see if we can get the test signal from the oscilloscope back into the component tester and test that. Right, so let's bring that off and let's feed a test signal back to here. So frequency and into there. How's that? All right. Whew. There we go, frequency, 1000 hertz. So there is one kilohertz frequency. But bonus. So it's not showing us the duty cycle, which is a shame. It'd kind of be cool if it could tell us the duty cycle of the frequency as well. But um, still, so we've now, we've now discovered that this thing can generate a signal, which we can pick up on our oscilloscope and it can also detect an incoming signal that the oscilloscope is generating for it. So I wouldn't use this thing to, uh, I wouldn't use this thing to check frequencies. That's what the oscilloscope is for. However, on principle, it's doing it. So yeah, this thing is functional. Um, voltage, oh wait, hang on a sec, voltage. 
There we go, there's the voltage external. Let's check the voltage output from it. Check the wave peaks on the scope. Um, we're gonna check the voltage first because we've just found the voltage output on it. Let's see what this thing, let's see what the voltage can do. Here's something fun that we haven't tried yet. Now this thing is being powered from a nine volt battery, so we're gonna ruin that. This battery is plummeting already. Our nine volt battery is down to 8.3 volts. Oh, this is measuring an internal voltage. I'm an idiot. Yeah, takes an input voltage. Check the wave, yeah, okay. Well, let's try that. I'm not gonna do any uh, uh, wave peak testing because this oscilloscope is not very good for that. Uh, let's just take the output from our DC power supply and measure that. So this would uh, establish the last uh, jumper block that we haven't tested. So we had frequency input up here, we had frequency output down here, and this is our voltage input. I'm not on AC, no, we are, uh, we're gonna be doing a DC input here. So I'm gonna stick the, um, I'm gonna stick the DC power supply on it and just start cranking up the voltage. You guys reckon it can take 50 volts? Let's find out. Right, so there is 8.9 volt indicated on the DC power supply. Let's just tune that up to nine indicated. There we go. Uh, oh yeah, the main the mains is AC. Yep. Right, I'll just quickly show you the setup we've got down here. Let's go for a wonder with the uh, with the face cam, FaceTime, and I've just got to reroute this cable around. Excuse me. Eh. Eh. Uh, right, so let's have a look at the bench down here. Under the bench, here's where the equipment is. So there's my soldering station. Just turn off the soldering iron, we don't need that on. So that's the soldering iron with the adjustable temperature. So we don't need you turned on at the moment. Right, so here is the DC power supply. So the DC power supply is currently shipping out nine volts um, and we're not, we're not drawing any currents, there's no load on it. So there is the setup. So let's turn this let's turn this guy up. So let's go. Whoops, dial that back a bit. Let's go for 15 volts indicated. This power supply is really bad. There we go. That's 15 volts indicated. And we're getting 14.9 on it. That's good. Alright, I'll see you soon, crazy unicorn princess. Thanks for dropping by. All right, let's go up. 19.8, not bad. 25, yeah. 30 volts. I think the power supply only goes up to 30. Yep, we're not gonna take that any higher because I might damage the power supply because this thing's a piece of crap. Not bad. Go for some real power, <laughs> yeah. Real power would be if we started measuring current, but I don't think this thing can do current. Right, let's just dial back. Let's bring this thing back down to normal. There we go, 9.1, 9, that'll do. 9.03 indicated. All right, so the voltage measurement works well. Cool. Nice. So that's our voltage testing. Right, well, thank you for tuning in everyone. I'm gonna pack up now. Still waiting for death laser. Well, you're gonna be waiting a while, Bacon. You're not gonna get your death laser. Take these jumper wires out. Good, whoops. That's a neat little device, I'm happy with that. For like another quid or two, I could have gotten a plastic box for it, but I thought I think that's all. I think that's fine as it is. Probably get some um, hot glue on those just to stabilise the uh, wires a bit so they don't come off. NVM config files. What are you trying to see if we can do like a, uh, a firmware update on this on this dude or something? Because you reckon there was a lot of firmware updates coming out for it. Get a bunch of blue lasers, focus them. Yeah, you could do that. 
Right, we're going to go say hello to, hello to Akira. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, George, thanks for your help tonight. Um, I'm sure you'll be joining in for uh, the future ones, right? You love me. You love these streams. I'll see you all next time. And I'll speak to you soon, George. I'll be in...